Hey there, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Gold Heist Chronicles. This is Chapter 2, Episode 1. And if you couldn't tell by location, we are in the Outland. That's right, we have finally moved out of Classic and we are on to the Burning Crusade. Now, I realized in the last episodes of how I would do this, I would do a whole entire mathematical breakdown and all this fun jazz. And as some people may recall from the last two episodes that had happened is the statistics tab has kind of busted and it doesn't quite report things correctly. I used to do a breakdown of the total gold, gold looted, gold quested, gold from auctions and gold from vendors and kind of do some mathematical stuff to see how much I ended up making. And then we would look at most gold owned and most gold in my bag. That ended up making the videos quite longer than I intended them to be. So from here on out, we are just going to be looking at total gold owned and the gold in my bag. They should be about very equal to each other. I might spend stuff so there could be a little bit of difference between the two. But this is where we're really going to be focusing on going forward. I'm still going to show you the whole entire statistics tab. If you want to pause it, look at it, glimmer at it and be like, you're never going to make it to a million gold. You sit down in the back. We are not there yet. We are only on the second expansion. I still have hope. All right, let's get into it. We are starting off with 34,963 gold, two silver and four copper. In our bag, we have 34,907 gold, 12 silver and 12 copper. Now the difference between the two is 55 gold, 89 silver, and 92 copper because I ended up spending money because I wanted to look good for this episode. So we did some transmog and now we are ready to be in the outland. And if you're wondering what the kill count is so far, we are at 15,652. And for total quest done, I'm pretty sure this is broken as well because it fluctuates and I will have 10 more one day and 10 less the next day. But we are sitting at 2,256. All right, that's enough yammering. Let's go ahead and see how much we ended up making in the Hellfire Peninsula. Now, if you are new to the series and who you haven't seen chapter one of this and you're coming into chapter two, I'm going to go ahead and just break it down to you. I am allowed to go into dungeons for this challenge as long as I have a quest that takes me into them. If I don't have a quest that doesn't take me into the dungeon, I am not allowed to go into the dungeon. So luckily, while I was in the Hellfire Peninsula, I ended up actually getting a couple of quests that took me into dungeons, two to be in, in fact. So what I end up doing when I'm in here is I go for a full clear. Everything must go. It's a clear and sell, fire sell, whatever you want to say. But I turn in my quest, I accept whatever other quests are in here, and I just plug along with my day. Now that we've finished with our second dungeon, let's go ahead and head out of here. We, I'm going to go ahead and sell all the junk that is in my bag, and I'll let you know how much we ended up making in the Hellfire Peninsula. Now let's take a gander for total gold owned. We are at 35,867 gold, 21 silver, and 52 copper. And that number is going to match up with what's in my bag because I ended up repairing everything and then selling everything. So they're going to be equal with each other. That means doing all the quests in the Hellfire Peninsula and those two dungeons I was able to go into because of quests, we made 904 gold, 19 silver, and 48 copper. Not too bad. And our quests are at 2,356, meaning we did 105 quests. Our total kill count is at 16,492. That means we killed 840 things while we were out here. Now let's head on out and make our way over to Zangara marsh i really like questing out in this area so just like before finished off everything here but we have some dungeons to do now this dungeon's kind of big so i was excited to go in here because that means that's more money for us to make now the one thing i was not expecting though because i honestly don't ever remember this being a thing but there is an npc inside this dungeon that actually gives you a quest to go into a raid and I honestly wasn't sure what to think about this because I feel like raids are huge. So that means that's a lot of NPCs to make gold off of. So I wasn't really sure if this was something that I should go and do because it's a raid, not a dungeon. But eh, that's a future me problem, right? You know the drill by now. So we are done with Sangara Marsh. So let's take a gander at the stats. 
most gold ever owned and gold in my bag are exactly the same at 36,733 gold, 71 silver, and 67 copper. Meaning we ended up making 866 gold, 50 silver, and 15 copper. Not too bad for this area. And if you're curious, the kill count is up to 17,160, meaning we ended up killing 668 NPCs. And we have done 2,425 quests, meaning that for some reason, Zengara Marsh only gave me 69 quests. Which again, I don't think is actually accurate, but like I said at the beginning of the video, the statistics tab for tracking how many quests you've done does not work right. I really noticed this when I was doing leveling through archaeology that some days the quest number would be different than other days even though I wasn't doing any quests at all so I'm kind of gonna guess that the statistics tab for that isn't quite working as well either. Now as for this quest that takes me into a raid I ended up looking at this and the item that I need drops off at the very last boss and it looks like it has a really low drop rate of 0.9% according to Wowhead. So I've kind of decided what I'm going to do moving forward with this is I'm going to go into this raid once. If it doesn't drop, it doesn't drop. So I'm not going to farm it or anything else like that. If it drops, it drops. If it doesn't, it doesn't. With that said, let's go into the Blades Edge Mountains. Now, I've actually never finished doing the quest out here, so this was actually really enjoyable to do. But enough of that, I know you're wondering at this point, did that item drop for you in the raid if Wowhead says that it's such a low drop rate? To answer your question, yeah. It dropped, which I was actually really surprised. Sometimes I'm not convinced that Wowhead's statistics are completely 100% accurate. But I got it, which means that I got part one for this raid quest, and that means I gotta go and do part two, which part two takes me to Karazan, Karazan. I know I'm not saying that right, but you know what I'm talking about. And we're gonna deal with that later. I'm gonna actually go into that raid when I'm tinkering around with the Cataclysm expansion for questing for gold. So we'll deal with this later. That is a way, a way future me problem. We finished off this area with 37,570 gold, 13 silver, and 83 copper, meaning for Blade's Edge, we ended up making 836 gold, 42 silver, and 16 copper. Our kill count is up to 17,808, meaning we ended up offing 648 things out here. And our quest is at 2,478, meaning we did 53 quests out here. Again, I don't think that's quite right, but I'm just going to read everything off as I have it. Now it's time to finish off this episode by heading into the nether storm. And I was not ready for the amount of headache that this was going to end up giving me. Now, normally when I come into the end of the, the, an area, I like to do the dungeons last, but for this video, we ended up doing the dungeons before we ended up finishing off two of the last little check marks I needed to finish off the achievement for finishing all of the quests here in the nether storm. Now I was under the assumption that I was going to go into the two dungeons that I had quests for and that was going to end up completing everything. I was wrong. As you can see, I still have one thing I need to do into the nether, the Sokrathar. And for the life of me, I flew around forever trying to figure out where the heck is the quest for this and how did I miss it? Then it dawned on me that I have an add-on called All the Things here and what it'll end up doing is it tracks your progression through your quest. So it kind of, if you hover over it for the quest giver, it kind of gives you an indication of what the pre-requirements are in order to get that quest. So I checked my, my friend's status and I kind of started getting a little bit confused, so I ended up actually having to go to the forums to figure out exactly what am I missing. So I finally figured it out. You have to head to Shatherat. You need to come to this location. You need to talk to this dude on a bridge. He's going to end up giving you a quest to talk to Cadgar. Cadgar's inside the big rock structure looking thing. Talk to him. He'll end up having an NPC little void light dude thing and you are going to follow him around and it's like, oh, this isn't going to take long at all. It takes almost 10 minutes. Oh. 
I want to point out the fact that this is sped up by 1000% and it still takes forever. So with that said, let's just skip to the end. But once that quest is done, Cadgar's gonna ask you who you want to become besties with. It does not matter which one you ended up picking, as long as you end up picking one. Because once you end up doing that, and you open your map, and you go back to the Nether Storm, look at that, there's a quest mark on Area 52. That's right, we still have quests to do. This chain of quests ended up having me going through the Nether Storm back to Shathra and then back to the Nether Storm. I kind of did that a few times, but I'm glad to say I finally finished it. So now that all of that fuss is completely done, let's take a gander and see how much money I ended up making in the Nether Storm and grand total for doing four zones here in the Outland. So we ended up finishing off the Nether Storm with 39,256 gold, 70 silver, and 60 copper. And that ended up giving us a total earnings of 1,686 gold, 56 silver, and 77 copper. I think this is actually the most I've made in a questing area. We ended up with a kill count of 18,829, meaning we offed 1,021 critters out here or things, whatever. And for quests, we are at 2,640, meaning we did 162 quests. Now I know you see a lot of junk in my bag, just ignore that because I have not been working on any of the professions yet. I'm gonna wait until I'm in Shatharat and then we'll we'll fish we'll we'll do all of that in the next episode. Don't worry about it. So what does that end up meaning for the grand scheme of everything? For the four zones we ended up doing, Hellfire Peninsula, Zingara Marsh, Blades Edge, and the Nether Storm, we ended up making 4,349 gold, 58 silver, and 48 copper. We had a total kill count of 3,177. And according to the statistics tab, we did 384 quests. I still believe I did a little bit more than that, but you know, we gotta go with the information that is provided by the game. So what's the takeaway from chapter two, episode one for the Outland? I think we are on our way to making some money. We are definitely gonna crest over the 40,000 gold mark in the next episode when we end up doing the last three zones here in the Outland. And then we are going to have to see exactly how much money you can make out here in the Outlands in the next episode. Hopefully you enjoyed this weird rambling of mine. If you did, consider giving it a like. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It is an amazing community of people here. They put up with my weirdness and I could not thank you enough for that. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today and I look forward to bringing you the next episode of the Gold Heist Chronicles. Bye for now.